Welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. On today's episode, I have uh, Patrick DeBello here with me. And I-, I thought I'd get him on just because we've been following each other for a good while now. I've always really lo- enjoyed watching his content. He has very good content. He can do very impressive stuff with, uh, with just certain exercises, especially bodyweight exercises. I've always thought it was quite cool. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not going to say too much. I'll let you introduce yourself, Pat- Patrick, what you do, where you're from, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Sounds good, Leo. Thanks for having me. Um, like you said, we've been following each other for a little bit, and I love your content as well. So I'm glad that you appreciate what I'm putting down. Um, so I've been in the fitness industry for around 10 years now. Uh, got into it mainly for myself, just to kind of create a healthier lifestyle and help myself get through some things that I was going through at the time. And then I realized how life changing it was. And probably eight or nine years ago, I ended up, you know, getting certified and starting to open up my own place. But uh, my true passion is body weight training and calisthenics, you know, type strength training and things like that. And I came across certain things like um, the human flag, uh, which is a pretty tough calisthenics move and then handstands and I fell in love with those two things in particular and it drove my like passion for fitness even more so I was really really like heavy into working out for the first couple years and then I started realizing like what adjusting my nutrition would do and I realized the changes that came with along with that um, basically took things to another level and then I opened up a gym here locally in upstate New York and I've just been kind of trying to spread my love for, you know, fitness and nutrition uh, through gym ownership over the past like seven years or so. And uh, I teach a lot of handstands and partner acrobatics, things like that. And I'm just big into mobility and keeping my body moving and, and sharing that love with, with others. Are you, is, is Upper State New York where you're from? Yeah, born and raised Syracuse, New York, so about four hours from New York City. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a good way to give people an idea of where we are. Yeah, I know it. I, I can't. I feel like I've maybe passed through. I've met a lot of people from there because I, I used to. I used to. I feel like people, if they listen to my podcast, if someone, if the listener listens to my podcast reg- regularly, they would have heard me mention this a bunch. But I used to live in Vermont for a year, so nice. she met a lot of people from Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse uh, cool. and, yeah, it's pretty close by. Um. Yeah, and the handstand training is always something I thought was quite fascinating because I I was going through a phase where I was like, really wanted to do my own handstand. And then other stuff just started popping up and then I just never got back into it because I've never actually been able to do one. So whenever you like, whenever you make a video on that, like more often than not, I probably, I was probably watching it and I probably was taking it in and dropped a like, etc. And DiBello, is that Italian? The last name? yeah. Yeah, it is nice. Okay, yeah. So, what I like your 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 father is Italian or both. Um, my grandparents from both sides uh, immigrated here from Italy quite a while ago, and yeah, mm-hmm. put their roots down in Syracuse, and uh, here we are. Yeah, there's a a lot of Italians and Irish in that yeah part of, uh, in part of that of the USA when I was there because when I went when I moved to Vermont that was like the first time I had ever left Europe and then I thought it was really fascinating the amount of people I was meeting with like Italians last names uh, Irish last names and yeah that was just always something quite interesting to me especially for someone who geeks out over history quite a bit as well um but yeah I so on on the part I actually wanted to so to clarify the gym that you make your content in, that's your gym. Yeah, so um, I actually closed the gym in June of this year. So June of 2022, I actually closed the gym. So I remodeled my garage at my house and that's where you see the current uh, content that I'm filming. But um, for, for the past seven, eight years, I did have my own split, my own space. I, I went from, I had three different locations that I bounced from. I didn't own three locations at once Um, but I started out at a really small place and then I got into a bigger place and then I got into like a really big place and uh, to no surprise of most people the pandemic hit Mm. and I was doing I had like thousand square foot place I had a friend of mine that was renting some space and I was doing private training so personal training and um, a lot of like specialty classes like handstands partner acrobatics 
even just like a basic stretching class that wasn't yoga. So Syracuse is a very CrossFit and yoga driven uh, area. So there's a of the people who want to learn handstands and partner acrobatics. So it took me a while to build up those classes. Uh, and I was kind of, I was on the upswing, you know, after five years of grinding, I got those classes built up and we had a great community and then COVID hit um, and obviously that changed things. So we were shut down here in New York state for a while. Um, and then when we were able to come back, you know, we were able to open back up. It was great for the overall fitness of the community of Syracuse, but I was teaching classes that were like very hands-on, like partner acrobatics. You're, it's two people. It's acro yoga. You're touching people. So um, we had these six foot distance guidelines um, and even like handstands. I'm, I, I'm very passionate about spotting people um, because that's really one of the best ways to improve your handstand is with a hands-on coach that can put you into alignment and help you, you know, learn those things. Um, and I wasn't able to really do that. So those classes, never really came back full swing. Um, and then after diving fully into online coaching for, you know, the couple of years of the pandemic, I started realizing that, you know, the in-person training was, was uh, just not really, it was just different. It changed, you know, my group classes didn't come back. So I remodeled my garage and I got my handful of private clients that come to the house. Um, I have a good relationship with them. And then the rest of the people I train online and it helps because I can reach more people and help more people, which is ultimately what I got into this to do. So I have a, it's great. So I have my own home gym. So very, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big perk. It is man. It is, especially in the winter time when it gets cold and I don't feel like leaving the house, I can just, you know, crank the heater on in the gym and get a workout in. Nice. And yeah, yeah it's like you said, with the one-to-one -one stuff, you can only help so many people, which I guess if, you know, if you're looking, if if the listener, as the listener, if they're looking for a trainer, it's probably not something they have to think about much. But as trainers, there is only so many people we can help one to one, which is why going online can also be a very uh, good option, as you said. I actually wanted to ask you about. I feel like you'd be a good person to ask about this, because um, I've written a, an article about this in the past, which I will happily leave in the show notes of this podcast episode for, uh, for the listener to 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 check out, but. Okay, so you've got so you've got your own home gym. So you're more experienced with home gyms than anyone. Let's say you've got someone they don't want to go to the gym. They're feeling a little bit intimidated. Uh, they so you know they've been putting it off for a while now, and then and but they want to get started by with just doing something, or maybe they can't. You know, I don't know if they they they'll say they can't afford membership, whatever it might be. They want to just start off doing something. So they're going to start off at home. They've got zero equipment. What do you think would be the best types of equipment? To, to invest in for someone looking to start off doing something at home? So I guess I I have to first say that I have to go with like, you don't need equipment, first of all. Like if you have, if you have no foundation, especially, uh, and that's why I'm so passionate about body weight training. And it's not that I don't like weight training, um, but it's, I, I feel like you should be able to squat, hinge, push pull and lunge your own body weight before you add an outside load that is heavier than your own body weight right like i know of course you can do a bench press with your own body weight um but to me just even a modified bench um, even a modified push-up is a great way to build the technique and understand you know the movement patterns of a push so i would say like first save your money and I say the term loosely because we never truly master anything, but, but master the basics, um, modified push-ups or push-ups, wherever you're at, there's no shame in doing modified push-ups, um, squats or chair squats at home, forearm planks, lunges, uh, any type of hinging movement, whether you're doing like, uh, replicating an RDL without weight or a single leg RDL without weight. And it's funny because, an RDL is essentially a standing forward fold in yoga. In yoga, when you're, you stand up, you hinge at the waist and you fold forward. It's essentially the same thing, but it's loaded with weight, right? You know, so we get people who just jump right into the gym and they start Romanian deadlifting 50 pounds more than their body weight. 
but like a week ago they were at a party telling their friends like if i just stand down and touch my toes I, like my hamstrings feel like they're gonna blow out but then they're doing the same exact movement with a heavy load um so in general i'm just like a huge fan of you know just nailing those basics um i like hollow body holds for core as well as uh planks but hollow body holds get a little bit uh, tough on the neck for people for beginners so if you just flip over and do some like stomach facing the ground core stuff like planks side planks things like that um the my the downside about body weight training is at home in particular without equipment which will lead me to my first piece of equipment that i would say um is you don't you can't pull right like unless you have a pull-up bar and you can do pull-ups or chin-ups because a lot of people have a pull-up bar hanging in between their doorway, but they can't do a pull-up. So what good is it? You know, you, you can't train. Um, of course, I'm a big fan of like isometric holds. So if you have a way to get up to the top of your pull-up bar and hold up the pull, pull chin-up or pull-up, that's great. Um, but I love the combo of a pull-up bar and a set of gymnastics rings. So under a hundred dollars, you can probably get both of those. And as soon as you hang the gymnastics rings from the pull-up bar and you can then do, you can do ring curls, you can do body weight rows. You can even do assisted single leg exercises. You can do double leg exercises. You can do hamstring curls on your back. You can do core knee tuck exercises. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the combination of a pull-up bar with a set of gymnastics rings, um, and a yoga mat, because basically all you need is the space of a yoga mat. And sometimes it's comfortable to put your knees on the ground. Like if you have a hard surface, um, if you're on carpet, you don't want to be sweating all over your carpet. So throw a yoga mat down. You can sweat on that. You can clean it up. Um, if I was to go into more like weights, I recently bought a pair of adjustable dumbbells and I have to say, I mean, they're expensive, but they are a real treat. Those things, even as a gym owner, honestly, I wish I had them for, for my gym. I do. Cause I got this rack of dumbbells that takes up so much space from like five to 20. And then I have an adjustable set of dumbbells that goes from like, I don't even know, 15 to 52. And it takes up less space than all those other ones. Mm, so yeah. Those are the two things. And you know what? Something that a lot of people already have is an exercise ball. Oh yeah, Those are great. You already know like, um, like uh, shelk, the hip extensions, um, knee tucks. I'm not a fan of push-ups on the exercise ball, mm. um, you know, but they're really good for hamstring curls. They're really good for core exercises, things like that. They're really good for beginners. If you can't do a body weight squat, if you lean the, the exercise ball against the wall behind you, it's a good way to set your weight back and accomplish a squat for beginners. Mm -hmm. um, so those are like real simple, simple things. Even I like sets of a set of parallettes. Um, parallettes, I don't know if you're familiar with them or if you're listeners, if you're listening and you're not familiar with parallettes, uh, parallettes are, they're like, they can be steel or wooden, but they're basically like mini parallel bars. So the gymnastics bars, um, that the gymnasts oh, use, yeah, where yeah, they, yeah. yeah, you can do like out, you can do dips and L sits and things like that as a calisthenics, um, as a person that trained calisthenics, those are one of the first pieces of equipment that I ever had. I built them out of PVC pipe. So I found a YouTube video and I built, I built parallel bars or parallettes out of PVC pipe. And that's how I did my dips because I'm sure you are on the same train as um, the, the bench dips with your hands behind you. I'm not a fan of those because they're just yeah. not great on the shoulder, you know, and they're so common and people love to do bench dips. But if you get yourself a, yourself a set of parallettes, you can put them right in between your waist, the same way a set of dip bars would be. And you can do modified dips with your feet on the ground, the same way your feet are on the ground for a bench dip, but you're not sacrificing your shoulder. You're literally mimicking the same exact motion for a regular dip. Mm. So that's a big part of, you know, my calisthenics thing is just trying to make sure that you're mimicking. If you're modifying an exercise, make sure that you're mimicking the exact movement. 
you know, even with a handstand, mm-hmm. whenever you're training a handstand, you want to make sure you're training it the way you would be doing it. Like when you want to perform it, mm-hmm. you know, not necessarily like as a circus artist performer, but like just always train like you're playing the game. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's a, yeah, that's it. So uh, there's a few things that I was, that was coming to mind as you were talking. So yeah, number one, I think, I hope I don't forget them all. As you were saying, I feel like, because obviously you mentioned the lockdowns that happened and, you know, I, I was coaching through that as well. And, and obviously just from what I was seeing, like on social media, et cetera, a lot of people were getting quite demotivated about working out at home. And I, I can agree. It's not the same. Like there's something about maybe, you know, just using much better equipment, maybe that g- most gyms would tend to have, but I was also like like there, so some people would come to me saying that you know because obviously i have interactions all the time in my, my instagram messages for example and i would just be like okay well can you do a push-up and i would you'd be maybe you wouldn't be surprised but for the amount of people that couldn't do a single push-up but yet refused to do anything because they couldn't train at a gym it, to me at the time it didn't make sense either i was like if you can't do a push-up then like, i wouldn't even complain about not having a gym i think the best thing yeah. you can do right now is to work towards doing a push-up because it's almost a blessing in disguise for them yeah 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 but yeah whether or not people would would, would have went ahead with that i don't know but i always thought that was just like i thought it was almost mind-blowing in a way i i completely agree and it's like that was almost a situation where it was like forcing people to do what they need to do you know like not resorting to what they wanted to do even people like you i know you want to go in and you want to back squat like twice your body weight, but you should take a step back and like really master a regular squat, like that technique and that movement pattern, because the people that you see that are like not only competing, but winning competitions, they're not strong and powerful and good at what you see them doing because of the one video that you see them doing on Instagram. It's the years and years and years before that where they're mastering their craft or they're on the journey of mastering their craft. So like just take a step back and master those basics and just get good at push-ups, get good at squats, get good at lunges. And there's all sorts of ways to like to increase the the difficulty of these exercises. You can add a half a rep, you can add a hold. You know, you can do so many things before you add weight before. And I'm just I'm just speaking off of like what I've seen, too, is people are so quick to add weight when not it's not even their muscles aren't ready, but it's like their joints and tendons aren't ready. So it may not be like the week that they start working out or they start going to those classes or the first month or two, but it's almost inevitable, like two, three years, like they got joint pain. And I was the same. I was the same way when I first got into calisthenics, I was doing muscle ups when I barely had a strong enough pull up, Yeah. right? Like I had a decent pull up, but not a good enough or strong enough pull up to be cranking out five muscle ups in a row. When the reality was I was using some momentum to get myself through that pathway, which was causing strain and stress on like my joints, like my muscles were strong enough to an extent to get me to like, muscle me through the movement but my joints and tendons were like not happy with what was going on Mm. so i really should have been taking a step back and getting better at pull-ups instead of trying to improve my muscle up yeah you know so yeah no i i I get i 100 get what you mean as well and i and to add to that and I, i sometimes i feel like it's, it's what you said as well and then it's the fact that a lot of i think a lot of people don't realize that a lot of these movement patterns they're a skill as well and i feel like sometimes a lot of people aren't maybe taking they'll you know they're quick to add weight as you said some uh sometimes that, so sometimes you'll get scenarios where yes people are quick to add weight but it, you know they haven't even built up the correct coordination for that skill and uh and coordination because yeah because it's, these exercises they're skills they're, they're things that you want to get comfortable at you know just putting your body through that motion and i feel like that's something a lot of people mess out uh forget about and then you've got the other extreme which i'm sure you've seen by now is where people 
they're too hesitant to add weight. They take, they just, you know, they're more than ready for it, but they just don't do it. And I've seen that. I, I've seen that a lot as well. Um, and uh, yeah, people just stay, I've seen, I've seen people go through programs and they will lift like the same weight for four or five yeah. minutes straight. And I'm like, okay, you know, next week when you do these exercises again, you could, you can definitely add weight to every single exercise you do go for it let me know how it feels they turn around they're like oh wow i didn't realize i was stronger than i thought yeah i mean and you yeah. see their videos and like you see their form videos and they're throwing the weight around like yeah. just tossing it around like a like a can of beans and you're like you can definitely <laughs> be and they're like what you mean i can grab that 20 pound dumbbell like yeah you can <laughs> let's get it so yeah you're right there's definitely both sides of the point yeah and uh, and so to and to, to to draw full circle again. So to summarize, anyone who's looking maybe to potentially invest in some home equipment, the um, the gymnastics rings, pull up bar, two great yeah. investments, and probably what the top two you'd probably say. Yeah, I, I mean, as far as yeah, I think those are my those are my two. Yeah, um, I think they're pretty solid choices. Yeah, because then you can adjust those rings and you can do so many things with the rings. Like you can still do assisted chin-ups and assisted pull-ups um, on the rings. And then you can take that step to the pull-up bar when you're ready. And if you want it, you can buy a resistance band and you can do assisted pull-ups and assisted chin-ups, mm. um, things like that. But I just like the dynamics of the gymnastics rings because you can do push, pull. I mean, I don't want to like take up time just naming exercises, but as far as gymnastics rings, man, like I said, bicep curls, body weight rows, you can turn around, you can do push ups, you can go back the other way, you can do I's, Y's, and T's. Um, you can do single arm rows, you can make those more difficult by changing the leverage. Mm. You can do, you can do pistol squ assisted pistol squats, you can do jump squats, you can do hamstring curls. You can do, um, you can do a single leg lunge with a knee drive. You can do reverse assisted reverse lunges. Yeah, that's a lot. Can, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like those are all pretty structurally sound exercises that will build a phenomenal foundation for you to take, like, and do anything that you want, or even just like, even if you want to hit like train weights three days a week, like doing those things will really strengthen. I just feel like the, you know, the, the supportive muscles that are really going to help you take things to the next level. And it's going to strengthen your, your joints and tendons as well. Mm. And when you say a, a gone, were you going to say something else? I think resistance bands are great too, but they're, they're just, they're not as good as rings, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I would, when you say gymnastics rings as well, you can, and this is almost me asking you as well, you could potentially swap that for, or would you say it's the same thing as a, a suspension trainer? Absolutely, for sure, no doubt. Um, with the exception of one suspension trainer out there, if you were trying to like um, spend money, there's one that it's a phenomenal, and it's not even, it's, it's, it's like TRX on steroids. It's called the Cross Core 180. And it's like a TRX, but it has a rotational aspect to it that, that adds just a whole other dynamic. Um, and there's a, there's another in, there's an instability um, aspect to it that just it is nutty. So um, definitely suspension trainer. There's so many out there. Uh, even a doorway suspension TRX makes a doorway version that like goes over a door instead of hangs over a bar. Absolutely. Um, but there's gymnastics rings that are expensive, like rogue gymnastics rings are like 60, 80 bucks now. But you can go to Amazon and get like a thinner diameter and a thinner strap. So um, like rogue straps are going to be really thick. The thinner one or the cheaper ones are going to have a thinner strap. So you can, yeah, whatever your preference is to just make that happen. Shoot, I know people who have used bed sheets. They've like... Yeah. Yeah, up well. yeah you know like it, it's definitely not the most ideal but anything to your point like any strap like apparatus that you can hold on to and move your body weight in like different forms different ways yeah 
yeah, uh, yeah, especially because it can be tough to, I feel like when you work out at home, pull exercises can be some of the toughest to do. So the suspension trainer basically covers all of that and, uh, and yeah. the pull up bar as well. And sure. you're like, you're even selling it to me right now because I, I most often work out at a gym, but sometimes I will do home workouts like this week, this coming week, I'm just going to be working out at home because I don't have access to a car right now. And, um, and I've got, you know, I've got a decent amount of equipment. I've got a pull-up bar, I've got a bench, I've got adjustable dumbbells, I've got the barbell, I've got resistance bands, but I would actually love a suspension trainer as well. I think that would be yeah, really yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, just just adding more tools to your toolbox, basically. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, go on. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm big into yoga too. I love yoga. My only, the only downfall of yoga is there's no pulling involved. You know, so like if you're big into yoga and whether you go to classes or do yoga at home, you're lacking a serious part of like, you know, your body, your str the strength in your body. Like it's 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 an imbalance, if you will. Like yoga is all front body pushing, whether it's plank, chaturanga, lots of front body activation, nothing in the back for the most part. Um, so a suspension trainer for somebody that does yoga just to get some real basic pulling just to create that balance between the front and the back side of the body and injury prevention if nothing else yeah you know um let yeah, alone have an imbalance can cause uh can cause injury and will cause injury if you cause it, yeah. yeah you know and like we don't have to go crazy into like the whole like posture movement but i do believe there's some truth to the fact that like if you're just pushing all the time and you're strengthening your shoulders and your chest those muscles are going to get stronger and in theory, bigger and tighter. So that is going to cause some compensation in your upper body, you know? So um, if you don't counter that to strengthen these muscles at all, and you're just doing 10 years of yoga with no, like, you know, no back strengthening, of course, there's going to be imbalances. It's just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, just to clarify, if you're listening and you don't really know what an imbalance is exactly, it's just when you probably could tell by now, but it's just when typically you'll have maybe one side of your body much stronger than the other, like the opposing side of your body much stronger than the other. So maybe you're in this case, as we were saying, the chest might be much stronger than your back, or it could even be vice versa, or maybe your biceps are a lot stronger than your triceps. So, so along those lines. Um, and to an extent though, um, there will be some indifference. Yeah, yeah. Like the left side of my body is in, it's stronger than my right, you know, like yeah. it's minuscule. And they, there are certain things that I know, like if I'm doing a pull up, maybe I'm like, Oh shoot, I, I think I gave a little bit more with my left, but it shouldn't be Huge. as detrimental as the examples that you're giving, like, like opposing body parts, mm. you know, like it's like the chest is opposite, essentially like the muscles in the back. And you just don't want those imbalances to be so drastic. It's like yeah. if, you're doing, if you're doing yoga four days a week, I'm not saying that you have to also be doing pulling exercises four days a week, but a little bit of help and like to, you know, throw a little bit of love in there to those back muscles, you know, wake them up, you know, yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I guess this is a whole different rabbit hole that we're starting to go down, but even, and you know, sometimes imbalances, you know, they're not necessarily a bad thing either. I, I would like, for example, if someone plays tennis quite frequently, they're bound to have one side of their body much stronger than the other. I would say like to stem off what we've been saying, it's uh, it's more an issue when you, if you start to feel pain, that's basically when you know, okay, maybe the imbalance is too much. Definitely. That's probably Definitely. in its most simplest form. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to say on that subject before I, I move on to the next point that I actually wanted to speak about? Real, I guess real quick, um, I mean, on the imbalance side of things, just to touch on like handstands real quick. So, um, you know, there's a couple of different ways that people get into handstands, right? Um, one of them is just if you plant your hands and jump up into a handstand, but the most common one is if you like kick up into a handstand. So a lot of times to use the example of somebody kicking up into a handstand, they usually use the same leg. So if you think of like a, a handstand practice session where you're practicing a hundred times kicking up into a handstand and somebody's using the same leg to kick up every single time, like 
one handstand session, you're kicking up like, let's just say 50 times as a beginner and you practicing three to four times a week. That means you are doing 150 to 200 reps of just kicking one leg up and back. So you're activating that glute and that hamstring. You're ultimately creating an imbalance. Mm. Right. And so not only are you going to be creating a way uh, like uh, you're going to be stuck in your ways where you're just going to be good at just kicking up with one leg. And you like if you ever try to kick up with that other leg, you're going to feel like an alien. But you're also creating imbalances. How big or small, I don't I don't know. But there's a decent chance you might end up like with some like nagging back pain in that area, like two years later. And you're like, why the heck does my back hurt? And it's like probably because for a year you did 200 like glute right. kick yeah you know what i mean like essentially they're they're glute kicks every single time you know creating that imbalance that may not hurt in the moment but down the road those small imbalances do lead to you know pain mm. yeah potential no, point i never even thought about that yeah that's a very good point um yeah so now you know if you're if you're listening and you want to work towards doing a handstand something to definitely pay attention to now sure now on to the next point i actually wanted yeah. to so today's the 23rd of october because and i only say that so the person listening knows but i'm going to release this podcast on the 31st of october which basically you know november is starting and you've probably seen this i've seen this a lot don't you think so i think november is always a really weird time for fitness goals and if anything it's when it's the month where most people are like you know i'm not even going to try now i'm just going to wait until the new year and then i'm going to start in the new year do, why do you think people do that if you have a reason like do you think because there's there's ways that i can take this down but yeah what, what what do you think of that um i don't i don't really i don't like truly know like the psychology of what would make somebody do that but i feel like it's they're just kind of making excuses mm. I, I don't know why i don't i don't know if i really have anything to add to that and i guess for an example, last night I was having a conversation with my, with one of my good friends about quitting smoking cigarettes, and he's like, "You know, I'm, I, you know, when I'm going to quit?" And he's like, gives me this like random date when like something in his life happens, like when this happens, and I was like, "Well, why then? Like, why not now? Like, why are you going to wait until then?" Hmm. And he really didn't even have an answer. I was like, you're, you're just making excuses because you don't want to put forth the effort now. And you, it's just, it's easy to say that, but it's hard to do the work. And I don't know. I don't know if that's why. Um, but I, I just feel like it's easy to say that you're going to do something then or do something in the future. And I wonder, I'd be interested to see like the numbers on the people who actually do something in in january you know what i mean like the people who are in november saying like i'm gonna wait till january and then actually do it you know mm. yeah i think um i think it's less about it being specifically november and and spe the fact that it's specifically november and less about the fact that it's specifically you know they're saying they're going to start in january i think it's kind of what you said i think i think it could be anything i think it could be their birthday coming up i think it could be uh, oh, yeah. exams are coming up I think I think it's not necessarily the actual thing that's happening it's more them just giving themselves another excuse to not have to do the thing yeah I mean for me I just I didn't have anything going on <laughs> I, I had no excuse mm -hmm. you know like at the time this was over 10 years ago I happened to be working from home I mean, it was barely even a thing then um, but I was like where I was working from home I had more free time than I thought. Like I had no excuses. I was had to, I had to look myself in the mirror and like, I was never, I was never like, I was never this like obese. I was never like huge, but I had some seriously unhealthy habits. I mean, I did not pay attention to what I ate. I was, I would eat fast food regularly. I would eat, I would drink like, I drank alcohol a lot, but I was like sodas all sorts of not even just the fact that having a soda is bad but i was like living off these things it was like 
I lived off the middle of the grocery store. I lived off of like the, the gas station coolers, you know, and I was smoking cigarettes for 10 to 15 years. And at this point it was like, I have no excuse. There's a gym right here. <laughs> like I have free time. There's a gym in my complex. Mm. I'm looking myself in the mirror and I'm either going to do this now or I'm going to continue to like put on this little bit of like extra weight year by year, which isn't even the big deal. I'm going to continue to be more and more and more unhealthy. Like the path that I took 10 years ago, the person that I would have been like health wise, who cares like aesthetically, like what I would have looked like. I would have, I would be in bad shape, like eating fast food, drinking sodas and ice, like Arizona iced teas. Like I would have trouble walking up the stairs. I'd be breathing heavy. Like I wouldn't have fun doing any of the athletic things that I was, that I can do, but it just came down to like, I guess I didn't have a birthday coming up. I didn't have like, a, I didn't have a holiday. I remember it was like, it was May, April or May. And I was living in Orlando, Florida and I was working from home. It was like, bro, hmm. you better get it done. Hmm. Like now or never. Okay. And that was the moment for you where you just, just started from there. Yeah. I started from there. I started hitting the gym and I was lifting weights and I, I didn't like really like it. So I hired a boxing coach and I started taking boxing lessons and I didn't, I moved out of Orlando shortly after that, but it was over from there. Like it was just like, I hit the ground running. Like the next thing I caught after boxing was calisthenics. Mm, and then it was, over, it was over from there. Then I was like, Whoa, I'm just a regular dude. who Like seven months ago could barely do any push ups. And like now I'm seeing the potential of what the human body can do. And I'm like, Whoa, I can do these things. Mm. Like, this yeah, it's pretty really cool when cool. you realize that for the first time. Yeah, like it would be really cool that I could do something that a I didn't even know was a thing like two years ago. And then when I saw that it was a thing, I was like, "There's no way I'll ever be able to do something that cool." And then I'm like, "Whoa, I could do this. Mm. I could." Do and then it's like, "Wow, I am doing this." Mm. And then I hit the the point where I was like, "Wow, I could teach other people how to do this." Mm. Like other people could experience this. This would be really cool. Mm. So it feels like a little bit of a unique journey for me. So I feel, I don't feel comfortable. Like I we're, we're discussing, you know, we're trying to figure out, but I wouldn't feel comfortable like judging what somebody else's reasons are for holding them back, whether it be two months, three months, a, a year, you know, because as, as a coach and as a gym owner and a trainer, I taught class, like group classes and I can't tell you how many times I had a friend being like, I'm telling my friend, they got to come see you. They, they got to come see you. And then like six months later, they're like, I've been telling so-and-so like, he's got to come see you. It's like when they're ready, they're going to, they're going to come to you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what is holding them back, but when they're ready and it's going to be better then because if, if you force them to come, they're not going to be in it yeah 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 you know yeah you're right and uh yeah obviously yeah everyone's journey is it is it, it, quite unique and one thing i will say is that generally speaking just from a lot of the conversations i've had obviously again everyone's got their own reasons but just generally speaking i think the reason why most put, people put it off is because they try and take on way too much too soon they do what they think they've got to do mm -hmm. um you know and what and it, and it's so and more often than not it's usually these really drastic changes that no one can sustain not even me or you and and that's the reason why they usually put it off to that extent and i always say to people look basically if you're every if you're always telling yourself that you're going to start next monday then that's concrete evidence that what you're trying you're trying to take on way too much too soon i like that yeah and and i think let's put it this way just to add some sort of I guess not maybe maybe not a conclusion but just some sort of uh advice takeaway advice let's say all right what's three things 
regardless of what anyone's goal is, like specific goal, they just want to be fitter, that they can do right now, so they don't have to wait until January, they can start, again, this is coming out on October the 31st, but if, but they can start this November, October, last day of October, November, even maybe December, if you're, if you're listening to this in December, what's three things that every anyone can do right now that's only going to improve their health and fitness? Are you talking like somebody that has not, is doing nothing at all? I know nothing you just said that. Like nothing at all. Yeah, which is the majority of the population. Yeah. I mean, depending on where you live, just go for a walk. Yeah. Like and you know, I know there's a ton of there's a ton of talk right now about walking and stepping, but like I'm talking about like don't even think of it as a workout. You know what I mean? Like, just think of it as a time to just get out there and move, you know, and, and to just like have a time in your day that you're moving, mm. you know, and that you're doing something active. You know, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can think of it as like a workout time. And then when it comes time for you to like, when am I going to go to the gym? Like in a month, if I want to start going to the gym, like when am I going to go to the gym? Oh, well, probably the same time I've been going for my 30 minute walk. Like that's an ideal time for me in my day. I've created that space. Or when am I going to work out at home? Oh, I'll swap my walk out because like I've already got that time in my day. Um, I want to try to make things like as, as easy as possible too. You want to try to, you, we don't, you want to create boundaries when we're trying to simplify things, you know? So um, I would say, you know, definitely going for a walk is something that you can immediately do to start getting benefits of, of being more active, mm. you know? Um, and I say that too, because going to a gym is intimidating. Joining a group class is intimidating. You know, like, I think it's unrealistic to say like, oh, go join a group class. Yeah, just because the guidance. Yeah, the guidance would be great. Like that's what. Like I truly think. Like, I mean, if if everybody could afford a personal trainer, it's a no brainer. Like, go get a personal trainer. But everybody oh, yeah, can't. Yeah, afford, yeah. You know what I mean? Like everybody can't afford a personal trainer. But it's that guidance and that structure. Because to your point, everybody tries to do too much too soon. You know. So to answer the question, just walk or find something that is active that you like to do. I don't even care. Go play basketball, like play a pickup game of basketball, um, play catch with your kid, do something active. Like, I don't even care if it's walking. So I kind of want to like take that back. Just yeah, do something active that you enjoy that you don't feel like is a job or don't, you don't feel like is a chore. And I guess that's what I meant when I was saying like, don't use the work, the walk as a workout. Mm. You know, what I was trying to say is like, whatever it is that you choose to do, like make it fun. Mm. Find something that you can do that you enjoy for 30 to 40 or 60 minutes. Not every day. You know what I mean? But just like move, feel like a kid again. Do something that makes you feel like a kid again. Mm. You know, I think that was that childlike joy of learning how to do a handstand or even just the body weight stuff in general is what really brought me to having a, a love for fitness and making it like a lifelong thing was like that childhood joy of doing something fun and doing something I didn't think that I could do. Um, I think the next thing to add for somebody, um, are we talking nutrition too? Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Just, just drink some more water. Again, I know it's like, it's always talked about, but like I, I myself, I know so many people and I don't say so you don't have to, you don't have to just drink water all day, but I know so many people who drink, who don't, A, don't drink any water. Yeah. Drink so many other things. And I don't, I'm not saying stop drinking your Starbucks coffee, stop drinking this, but just drink some more water. Yeah. You know, actually, I just made a, a, a reel yesterday about um, new, like beverage, beverage, nutrition on beverages because it's so overlooked, but those liquid calories, they'll get you. And water is just a real treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's definitely a very overlooked one, water. Drink, drink For sure. Water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. um, did you have a third one in mind that you wanted yeah, to? Yeah, my third one, I'm just going to like, third one that might be a little bit more difficult, I think, but like, 
start training body weight movements. Mm. Uh, like I'm just going to kind of, it's like a little more, a little more blunt, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, like today you should try holding a plank. Yeah, you like, can do that at home as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you don't need a gym, you don't need anything for this. And when I say try holding a plank, you can even just hold a tabletop position, which would be a plank with your knees down. So just, and if you've never done a plank, then you should try holding a position with your hands and knees on the ground. Mm. Just try holding tabletop, you know, like for sure. Uh, if you've never done a squat, you should try bridge pose. Like, I think those are like immediate actions that like are a little bit more on like the harder end, you know what I mean? Like maybe being a little bit more, uh, a little bit more pushy. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like start training some body weight stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, if, even if you're, if you're listening, even if you just like, if you're doing nothing right now, let's say, even if you just done one of these things, you would already be on the, you'd already be better than you'd already be doing better than you were before. And you'd already be on the right track. And, sure. and, um, and I felt That's like, yeah, exactly. And I felt like an honorable mention as well. In, in addition to everything you said is, uh, again, you don't have to do all of these three or four things, but again, like I said, if you at least do one, introduce one, then you're already on the right track. But I feel like an honorable, honorable mention as well would be a uh, extra protein because, Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you can the product because the majority of people I coach are in the UK and I've always noticed that so within the within the first few weeks it already becomes quite clear that I always noticed that the majority of people they lack in protein intake like that's always been a recurring thing I'm like okay is uh, and I, I've kind of come to expect it now where most people are probably lacking in protein interestingly and this is me going down a little bit of a rabbit hole whenever I've coached anyone in Portugal which is where I currently live um protein intake is not an issue in, in portugal really it's not it's every time so whenever i coach someone in the uk more often than not it is whenever i've coached someone in portugal they're nearly like their protein intake is like always in a good place when we've started and i always found that quite interesting and this is just generally speaking it's not always but it's more to do with the fact that i feel like with, with portugal a lot of the dishes are just very meat centered or seafood centered Okay. So, yeah, that's just a more of a rabbit. I, I'd probably think it would be the same in maybe the same in Italy. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that kind of creeps in though. Yeah, you know I was I mean? gonna say that's what I was thinking too because uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. There's a. Lot, I was just talking with my fiance though. It's a lot of, lot of pork. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there's yeah. a lot of pork, a lot of beef, and something like that. Yeah. But, I mean, to your point, it's not even people that I coach. Yeah. It's people. That I associate with it's everybody that I yeah. know that is yeah. in tune with with their fitness you know and I'm I, not everybody I know but everybody that I know that's not in tune with their fitness and no offense you know what I mean you're, oh, yeah. these, are my, these are my people you know what I mean like I love you guys but you need to eat more protein if you're listening to this and you know you know I'm talking to you yeah talk I mean, about, yeah yeah it's like the people I hang out with like you know we're hanging out and like we're on road trips together and like they I'm having these conversations with them. I'm saying like, I'm seeing their choices. I'm like, no, hey, bro, eat this instead. You know, um, any conversation I have, people are just and not eating enough protein. And we are not having a conversation trying to get people to eat enough protein to be a huge bodybuilder. And I think that's yeah. the conception is yeah. people yeah. sort of, whether it's a subconscious or conscious thing, they sort of steer away from protein because they think they're going to be jacked mm. and it's like not only like that bodybuilder is doing so many things intentionally to get that big yeah. and they're eating way more protein than we're suggesting you eat and that's not even what's helping them put on the size they're in a they're eating way more calories they're in such a calorie surplus like just eating protein isn't i mean isn't going to turn you into Popeye. And I guess that was like the gift and the curse of that whole slogan of like spinach and protein. And it's like, it's going to give you, make you strong, but it's not just going to instantly like Blow jack you, you yeah. up. You know, like I didn't know so many people who don't eat a hundred grams of protein a day. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's not like, you, to be honest, I'd say it's the majority. Ab absolutely. And we can't give general protein recommendations. Like, the amount of people listening, like everybody's going to be eating a different amount of protein. 
But if you're a grown man or woman, I would be willing to bet most of them, most people should be eating around 100 grams of protein, if not more. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, yeah. I mean, 100 grams like, is just a great, like, I would say it's a, it's a good aim to start with as well. Agreed. You know what I mean? That's the thing too. Like if you're, if you're listening and you're not eating, like if you don't know how much protein you're eating, I would say track it, like see how much. And if it's like an eye opening experience, which tracking your food and calories and macros oftentimes is, that's why it's a good thing to do for at least a short period of time. Mm. But if you're like, Oh wow, I'm eating 40 grams of protein. Like yeah. you could, you can eat more. Like I'm, I don't know you, mm. but I'm going to, I, I'm not really a gambling man, but once a year I do go to a casino and put a hundred dollars on black. So if it's that time, I'm, I'm betting that you could eat more protein. Yeah. Um, I have a friend uh, and client who I was training recently and they were talking to me about like feeling good and, and making progress, but just feeling like they're like missing a little bit of strength gains over the past X amount of time. And I said, you know, and he knows his stuff. He knows about nutrition. He's a like, very knowledgeable um and he said he's probably eating around like 60 grams of protein and i was like and he he asked if he should eat more calories and i said i would be willing to bet your calories are probably like spot on but you could probably like bump that protein a little bit and i think it's not, it's not gonna if you increase your calories you might put on a little bit of weight if you don't care that's fine but i think you should definitely increase your calories even a 20 even a 20 gram protein shake in that case i think would be like like a straight like shot to the bloodstream of extra protein for that person um so yeah i know a lot of people who are just not near 100 grams and i think that's a good goal to shoot for mm. Yeah, no, same. I I would say the same. That's generally what I I will aim for. And you know, depend. Obviously, there's going to be more in the individualistic stuff. But generally speaking, yeah, I feel like that is a very good goal to have. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that was a fun conversation. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on before I uh, drive it, uh, start closing it down? Yeah, I no, I think we gave a nice little chat about some calisthenics and touched on nutrition. I think that. You know, the important piece is like, I think I'm glad you mentioned the protein. I think that's a really, a really important part. Like you said, it's something we can kind of both pinpoint that we see, you know, when it comes to fitness, do what you love. There's a lot of different, you know, types of fitness. There's weights, there's Pilates, there's yoga, do what you love, you know, do what you can stick to. Also try to find ways to create balance. But one thing we can pinpoint almost all the way across the board um, is, is nutrition things and, and a lack of protein and a lot of the people that we talk to so i think that was a real important thing to drive home yeah and you know what? now we're speaking about like with the protein thing i had like a random flashback as we were speaking about it because i remember i'll never forget i, I never forgot this because i, I just feel like like if, if this isn't me speaking down on anyone i would say this is more it was just more of an eye-opening experience to how people see protein as as to what you said before about like it's not it's not something that's going to make you enormous in any sort of way it's not going to turn you into a bodybuilder but i remember simply buying when i was in japan i simply bought like a protein shake in a store didn't even have a crazy amount of protein in it was like i think it was 15 grams of protein within the shake and uh that was like the best one they had so i got it and uh, i remember when i came out my friend looked at that and they go aren't you worried you're gonna have too much protein and like this isn't someone who's like active in any way and like they were very sedentary but i remember just thinking that was a very interesting comment and uh, obviously like i explained like in simple terms like to, to put like obviously i didn't go on a lot hot a whole tangent but i was like no this is, I, I probably need this amount and, and then explained it why but yeah i always just thought that was such an interesting comment and it's actually a comment i've probably heard maybe not necessarily to me but i've heard it more than once just like in day-to-day -day conversations with other, you know, when with other people involved, etc. And yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I feel like it's I think marketing is is a lot to blame. I don't know, blame, but it has a lot to do with the perception of protein because obviously I think the target market for protein powders or protein supplements were people that were already working out at least 10, 15, 20 years ago when they started yeah. really popping. You know, when a lot of these companies just started making their own stuff and the, the, the market really got huge and they're putting huge bodybuilders on their 
yeah. on their on their covers, you know, and then you got mass gainers and all this other stuff. And I just, I know I had a protein powder. It was actually more of a car. It was a protein and carb supplement that I used to love. And it was locally, locally made in Syracuse. And it was made by a local bodybuilder. He was a monster and he was on the cover. And I never forget when I would bring that bottle home, my mom would be literally terrified that I was going to turn into the man on the cover just from taking that protein. And it, it was so cute. And I'm just like, ma, like, <laughs> it's just, it's not how it works, you know, but I feel like that's a general perception to an extent of protein. And I don't, I can't pinpoint how or when that happened, Yeah, yeah. but people are seriously like intimidated by protein because yeah, eating too much, you know? So, yeah. and I've always well, found like anyone who says, you know, you're worried about getting too much protein is it usually comes from someone who probably would do well eating more, which is just a personal obs observation from myself again. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Um, but otherwise, uh, so where can people find you otherwise? So I'm pretty active on Instagram at my personal account is at Patrick DeBello Fitness. And then uh, TikTok, I've been enjoying the TikTok creation lately. And that is Movement is Motive. Um, at Motive, movement is motive on TikTok and at Patrick DeBello Fitness on Instagram. Um, those are basically the two places you can find me. Um, yeah, it's where I enjoy making content, and uh, yeah, I'd love to love to connect with some of you guys. I'm I'm so glad we've you know we've connected. It's been great. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah, yeah, this was good. Yeah. Been I able to feed off each other a little bit. I think. Oh, for sure. I feel like a conversation was uh, maybe overdue as well. Because uh, yeah. we obviously we've had some exchanges in the, in messages, but yeah, it was good to have this this uh, my, uh, longer conversation. I can't believe it's almost been over nearly an hour. Um, Bang. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and if you're listening from uh, Patrick's side, feel free to you know, drop a follow as well. My Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all at Leo Alves P T A L V E S. But I'll put that in the show notes as well. I'll link all of the the, the I'll link cool. the social media handles in the show notes. Uh, but Patrick. Thank you so much for taking the time yeah. to come on. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. We'll talk soon. Talk soon.